Hey, what's up guys and yes, welcome back to Anime King 3, and you already see what is coming guys, a brand new series for you guys to enjoy, and don't worry, just because I'm posting this brand new series, that doesn't mean I'm going to be doing anything to what if Naruto had the deadliest bloodline, yes, that will be finished, but yes, you guys are getting a brand new series for you guys to enjoy, what if Naruto? was sealed in the Shinigami for years. Part 1 guys. Yes you heard that correctly. Naruto would be sealed away in the Shinigami for years. And you already know this is done by Anime King. So there's no link guys. So just sit back relax. And enjoy. And also go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto. Was. Banished. And no Kanoha needs him. Part 2 over in Anime King 2. And over in making, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto went insane with a powerful bloodline. So go ahead and enjoy it as well. And yeah, without further ado, what is to begin this new series? Start the intro. Kanoha was the strongest village within the elemental nation. It was known as the strongest because it always managed to come out on top and it was always someone that just emerged from the village that was just different. First there was Hoshirama Senju, there was Madara Uchiha, but eventually Madara turned against the village but he still helped create said village. As Kanoha always birthed powerful shinobis, Toborama Senju, Hiruzen Sartobi, the White Fang of the Leaf, there was Minato no Mikaze, there was many powerful greats, but the line did not stop there though, as there was one man that was said to be the greatest even better than Minato no Mikaze. He was just different. His name was Naruto Uzumaki. Brother-in-law of Minato Namikaze. Brother, younger brother to be exact, of Kushina Uzumaki. Before Uzu destruction, Kushina had been sent to Kanoha to be the next holder of the Nine-Tailed Fox because of her special chakra. Her mother and her were the only ones. Her father had died but not before. He left another addition to the family. And that was her baby brother. Upon giving birth, her mother had died. There was some problem with the pregnancy. Kushina stepped up, even though she was a child. She was smart enough to keep her brother with the support of her clan though, protected. But when she was chosen to be the next holder of Nine Tail Fox, she would not leave her brother behind. So after much consideration, he was also brought to Kanoha as well, under Mito's care and Kushina as well. As he was a delightful baby, sparkling blue eyes like their father. Their father was not a full Uzumaki. His father was from a small clan known as the Namikazes. They weren't really a clan per se. They were just a large population of them. Their family name was large. It branched off into different sections. But most of them were killed in the war, as the second Shinobu war was not good for any of them. So her father had blonde hair, and thus Naruto got different shade of hair, unlike her pure red hair. His hair was blonde, coming out from the roots, but at the tip of each of his hair it was red, crimson, as it gave him a really fancy look. As Kushina watched over her baby brother and protected him. She always managed to keep him safe until he started to grow, where he started to look out for her and always making sure that she was safe even though she was the older one. As she had taken over from Mito and became the Nine Tails Jinjulke, 
but it was rather secretive given that most people did not know. But he wanted to protect his sister, so he trained. As he was different from most people, the Namikasis had a special thing about them, which is why they could be considered a clan. They were naturally fast. Their metabolism, they were insanely fast. The way they move, think, everything, their mind is a lot faster than most people. As they can see something and go over it several times before, coming up with a proper stretches. Although they were not as super smart like the Naras, they had their head on their body and they knew what they were doing. Because of his fast metabolism from the Namikaze and the overwhelming amount of chakra that he gained from his Uzumaki side, which was shocking to everyone, his chakra almost seemed limitless. He had been tested many times. It always shocked anyone who tests him to find out that he possessed such quantity of chakra and the scary thing about it because of his fast metabolism. He was able to quickly control his chakra. His body just blended together perfectly, making the perfect warrior. So just like that he grew, fast. He learned everything that he could as he cemented his name in the history. He became good friends with Minotan Mikaze because of his last name, as Naruto was surprised. After all, his own father was an Amikaze as well, but he had taken up the Uzumaki name when he married into the Uzumaki clan. As Naruto had searched if there was any relationship there, but they were not related. But Naruto came to see the man as a brother even though Minato was a couple years older than him. But despite the year difference, Naruto did not let that stop him. He rose to the ranks. He became a genin at 7, a chonin at 8 years old, and he became a special jonin at 10 years old and a fully jonin at 11 years old. So he was able to keep up with the big dogs. And just like that, him and Minato was able to decimate the third great Shinobu war, gaining them their titles, Minato being known as Yellow Flash, and Naruto being known as the Limitless. Because of the quantity of chakra that he possessed, many people always wonder, if the both of them were to fight, who would win, the Limitless or the Yellow Flash? But most of the higher ups knew, even Minato knew, that Naruto was stronger, as Naruto was just different. Tonight though was a horrible night, as Naruto thought that he was going to welcome his beautiful niece into the world, as Kushina had got married to Minato, making it official as Minato became his brother-in-law. But he was like a brother to him now. But tragedy struck as chaos erupted in the village when the Nine Tail Beast attacked as everyone was sent on alert. At the moment though, Minato was able to subdue the beast. With the help of Kushina, her chains holding down the massive Nine Tails as the thing roared. It roared to get away, but it could not. It was angry as it feared its fangs. It shouted and roared, but Kushina used a chain to bind its mouth, trapping it. Minato would seal off the area, but he should know by now. His seals could not keep the Limitless out. As Minato had tears in his eyes as he looked down towards his baby girl, they had named her after Mito. She had beautiful red hair, just like her mother, a cute face like her father. Minato had tears rolling down his cheek as he knew. That he was never going to watch his girl grow up. The only seal that he could use right now to stop the fox was the Shiki Fujin. And that meant, as he gulped a bit, using his own life, which he would gladly do for the village and his wife and child, as there was no other way. As Kushina was extremely exhausted, she also had tears in her eyes as well. As she looked towards her baby girl, she looked towards Minato, who was starting to go through hand sign. The fox didn't realize what they were gonna do as he wouldn't allow it to roar. As he fluctuated his power, trying to corrode the chains. Kushina, who was already exhausted from giving birth and doing this, her chains faltered for just the slightest moments. As the fox saw his opening as he lashed out his claw, both husband and wife saw what was about to happen as the both of them moved to take the stab instead of their baby girl getting hurt. But, something happened, something moved them as the fox claw st 
stab in the earth, tearing it apart. Crying could be heard as a small child woke up. Kushina looked around confused until she found herself right next to Minato, who got back to his feet as his eyes focused. Naruto, he said, as Naruto was holding on to the crib in his arm, the small basket, as he smiled. You have a cute daughter here, said Naruto. Brother, said Kushina, as she gave him a delightful smile. You're here. As Naruto crouched down toward his sister. You look tired, said Naruto. As a small smile made her tiredness feel like he was being washed away. As he placed a hand on her cheek, as he realized that she was in a bad state, and resealing the beast inside of her right now might end up killing her, he glanced towards Minato. As he looked around the ear at the candles, as Kushina had tightened her chains back on the fox as he could not move anymore. You're planning to use the Shiki Fujin? Yes, said Minato. It's the only way. It's the only way that I can. Before Minato could finish that sentence, chains burst from the earth and wrapped around him as they pulled him down beside Kushina. As he struggled to get free, Naruto, what are you doing? Release me, he said. As Naruto flicked him across the head. Nah, I don't think so, he said. This is no time for playing around. You have to let me go. I have to steal the fox away. I'm sorry, but I can't. What are you doing, said Kushina. That girl need you, said Naruto. She needs both of you. And I will be damned if I let either of you die and not get to raise your daughter. No. Said Minato, I'm the Hokage, this is my decision. Release me and let me do this, said Minato. He would have used the Irish in to flash out of there, but Naruto chain had a sealing tag on it that sealed away his chakra that prevented him from flashing anywhere. And it is my duty as a Konoha Shinobi to aid the Hokage to the best of my ability. Kushina was torn as she looked at her baby brother as she knew what would happen if he did this. As Naruto smiled at her, seeing the conflicted look on her face, she didn't want to lose Minato, she didn't want to lose him, she didn't want to lose anyone. Come on now, said Naruto. Don't lose your temper on me. As she was known for losing her temper in the easiest situations. As Naruto calmly looked toward the massive fox, as he saw Harrison and the others. But the seal would not let them in. But Naruto was able to bypass it though. And besides, he was the second person that knew the Reaper Dead Seal. The others would just mess it up. They were about to say something, but Naruto spoke. I love you both, he said. You're both my family. And I only want the best for you. And if I can do that by sacrificing my life, I will do so in a heartbeat. I'm not afraid of death. I'm just afraid that the both of you will not be here to raise a child of yours. You have been more than a sister to me, Kushina, said Naruto. As tears start to pull from her eyes. You've been like a mother. Concerned I never got to meet mine, said Naruto, our father. But you guys are my family, and I don't want them from the little one, said Naruto. As he looked towards the massive beast. That is why I have to do this. Tell her that her uncle loves her, said Naruto. As he saw that Kushina wanted to say something, but he stopped her. This is my choice. I love you, big sis. As he glanced towards Minato. I'm gonna be taking half of the fox with me. I'm not sure that her body can sustain it all. This power is too corrosive and dangerous. I was planning on doing the same thing, said Minato. As him and Naruto's mindset was similar to each other. As Minato would stop fighting because he could not get out no matter what he did. Take care of my sister. And your little girl here, said Naruto. As he gave the boat of him a wink as he moved. The events then happened rather quickly. The moment his soul was extracted from his body by the Shinigami, along with the half of the nine tails, the chains loosened. As Kushina's chains loosened as well. She got to her feet as her chains started to retract to her as he heard the baby crying. Minato stepped forward as the barrier finally came down. Harrison and the others rushed forward only to see Kushina moving towards her baby and her brother. 
He lied there with a peaceful smile on his face, even in death. A shaggy, crimson blonde hair covering his eyes as she pushed it away as she held the baby in her arms and rocked it back in front. As she looked down towards her deceased brother, as she placed her hand on his cheek as she started to cry. As Minato placed her hand on her shoulder as others came over. And that was how he died. That was how the famous Limitless Naruto Uzumaki fell. It only took a day, a single day, for the proceedings to happen and the funeral to proceed forward. As the sacrifice of Naruto Uzumaki was known through the village, as people cried that day, mourning him, he's done so much for this village. He even gave his life for this village. As many people respected that, as he was laid to rest along with the others that fell that night, he died at 18 years old. But there was no one that could not say that he did not live life. He lived life to the fullest. As Kushna was sitting down, as she had her daughter in her hand, as she looked towards the pictures with his being on top, as tears fell from her eyes. As it was a somber mood, no one was happy. They might have stopped the beast but they lost so much. They also lost one of their greatest heroes as well. As everyone was saddened by that, as Kushina felt someone sat down beside her as she turned. As she looked towards the woman that was beside her, Kurina Yui, as she was Naruto's girlfriend, as Kurina placed hand on Kushina's shoulder. Trying to comfort her even though she was hurting as well. As a memory popped into Kushina's mind, her brother was quite the go-getter. He always had females fussing over him because of his good looks. There were many petitions around the village about who was the most handsome, Minato or Naruto. And Naruto had the leading vote. He was really good looking. So he always had girls fussing over him. He always said that he was not a one-man girl. He had this little perverted side of his, which Jiraiya seemed to love so much, until someone was able to conquer his heart, and that was none other than Kurna Yui, as the both of them had fell in love with each other, as they just started dating a year ago, and they fell madly in love with each other. The first time when he realized that he loved her, he had came over late in the night, woken up her and Kushina late in the night. The both of them were startled as they thought that something was wrong. As he had told them that something was off and that they need to sit down. Kushina had made some tea as they sat down, thinking that it was something bad, something urgent until he told them that he felt weird. And he couldn't stop thinking about Kurenai. The both of them had laughed and they were a bit angry as well. Until they explained what he was feeling and he told them that they were right. Kurenai, when she heard about his death, she had refused to believe it. Naruto was the one that was always doing things that were seemingly impossible, he couldn't be dead. She told him to stop lying to her but they were not. And she was distraught by his death but she was here. Everyone was here as tears run down her cheek. The others were there to pay their respect as well, Kakashi and everyone else. It seemed that the whole village had turned out, the place was back. As they laid him to rest. As Naruto's body was buried amongst the heroes of Kanoha. All of those that sacrificed their life, they were all buried there. As the coffin was sealed and the ground was covered, something happened on his corpse. A seal on his chest activated and it spread. As the seal seemed to spread markings, conges that just seemed to twist on each other. As it came through the coffin, before it made contact with the earth. At that very moment it seemed to be drawing in nature energy. As Naruto body started to glow before, it was petrified. Yes, his very body was petrified. A substance that looked like glass surrounded him, trapping him on the inside. His body was just frozen in there. A strange glassy substance. The moment he came in contact with the nature energy of the ground, that it used to keep it like that. As his body was frozen in that state. Meanwhile, a place that no one would want to be. 
in the stomach of the Shinigami. As the god of death, a being that you could not stand before without witnessing horrible, decrepit things. The being that was said to be here before time itself, death and carnage. No one could really explain what it was. A special being that Shinobis had been able to ask a favor for in terms of your soul. That said being was watching the individual in front of him as Naruto was currently stuck in the Shinigami's stomach. But that is not what caught the Shinigami attention though. What caught his attention was what happened before he took Naruto's soul. Flashback. As the God of Death was summoned, it looked down towards Naruto. But it wasn't focused on the seal that Naruto was currently doing to have him take half of the Kyuubi's soul. It was focused on the seal on Naruto's chest that he activated at the last moment. As a being could feel something up with the seal. But it focused on his job that came here to do as he took Naruto's soul. A rather hefty one. Quite powerful indeed. Along with half of the Kyuubi as well. And thus Naruto was thrust into his stomach. So what now? Are you gonna torture me or something? Said Naruto. As he looked up towards the spectral beam, the Shinigami pulled back his hood to show yellow eyes. Its skin was purple, white hair, sharp, sharp teeth. It spoke, it had this echo as it spoke, like its voice boomed during the entire area. Your soul already belongs to me because of your sacrifice. But before I could take it, you did something. That seal on your chest. It is not a normal one. Tell me, what have you done? As Naruto glanced towards the beam in front of him. Nothing important, he said. The Shinigami chuckled. As it sent shivers down Naruto's spine. You think you can keep anything away from me, mortal? You're in my domain. I own you. Huh. That's so, said Naruto. Yes, as you can see there is nowhere for you to go, nowhere for you to run, you're mine. Huh. Yes you're right said Naruto, well if you must know, I'm going to use a seal to get the hell out of here. The Shinigami chuckled darkly, you think you can defy death? You think I will allow your soul to go free? <laughs> you are stupidly mistaken, you will never leave. You will stay in this place for eternity. Wow, that's morbid, said Naruto. As Shinigami looked at him, your soul will never be freed. It's now mine. Try as you must, but you will never leave. Well then, guess we'll just have to see about that, don't we, said Naruto. The Shinigami chuckled once more. You're quite an interesting mortal. You know, there's someone here that wishes to see you for what you did to him. Oh, and who's that? Never. Have there been a tail beast here for this long? They are always able to regenerate themselves. Unable to die because of the laws set up for them. But every now and then, whenever something happens, I've been greeted one of them, but never. Have I been greeted with the nine tail fox before? The half that you took in here. And it wished to see you. As Naruto heard a roar. As he saw the giant nine tail fox. Off into the distance looking at him. So. I guess he's pissed. Yes human. Very much so. And for the rest of eternity. It will be quite amusing to watch as you fight. The being that you trapped in here with yourself. Is that so? said Naruto. As the Shinigami move aside. Yes human. Now. Entertain me. The fox came running forward. To rip Naruto to shreds. As Naruto looked up. Huh. Oh shit he said. Time skip back to the mortal realm. A girl. She seemed to be 12 years old. She was wearing. An orange shirt with black stripes going down. As she was wearing black shorts along with black sandals as well. 
as they were taped coming up her feet, stopping right at her knees. As she had her kunai pouch on her hip, as she brushed her red hair out for her face, as she glanced up towards the monument that was created for her uncle, she never knew him because he died before she was born. He made the ultimate sacrifice by dying and sealing the nine tails inside of her. He protected the village. Her uncle was a hero in everyone's eyes. That is why they created this statue for him. As she would come here many times and just speak to it even though she never really knew him, she would gladly give a lot to know him. Not to mention her mother. Whenever they talk about him, seemed to miss her brother a lot. And she would be glad if her mother was able to see him once again. Her father as well. He was like a brother to her father as well. Many people in the village knew him and loved him a lot. She was told several stories by the villagers who loved her in proxy of being related to that man. As the village saw Mito Uzumaki no Mikasa as a hero, they would never, never go against their hero's final wish. He gave this life and Mito was holding that beast at bay to protect them all. And with Minato here, a seal expert, everyone was assured that this would never happen again. For 12 years straight, the people had lived in peace. At first they were cautioned and worried but as time go by they realized that the girl was merely that a child that was protecting them by keeping the claim at bay. I'll make you proud she said as she spoke to the statue of her uncle by winning this whole thing. As tomorrow was the finals of the exams, she had went through the first phase, the second phase and the preliminaries and now after a month of waiting tomorrow was the finals. She and several others will be taking a part of the exams. As she promised her mother and father that she would win this whole thing. Mito was confident. She was confident in her strength. As she knew not to go a bit overboard or be too overconfident because her father and mother had forced that lesson in her mind. As she understood that being too overconfident and getting herself in unnecessary risk could cause your death. Kushina saw Naruto inside of Mito. The both of them personality was so similar, sweet and nice but when you call for it, they can also be dangerous and very very serious. She loved her daughter as she was thankful every day for the gift that Naruto gave her, allowing her to live along with Minato to be able to raise their beautiful girl. Sometimes she wished that he was here though. As Mito made her way at the Namikaze household, Kushina had a smile on her face as she was going about her daily activities. She had stopped her ninja career after Mito was born and she just took care of her child. A lot has happened over the past 12 years. Her and Minato at the beginning of it all was down. Several things happened because Minato just didn't lose any shinobi and just didn't lose a lot of his village. He lost a brother and he kind of blamed himself for not being the one to sacrifice his life because he was a Hokage. He should be the one to protect the village and should have given his life in order to have lived to be here. As Kushina would have loved that. Not that she didn't love that he was here as well but he couldn't help but blame himself. To know that he would never see his best friend, his brother once again. But he had Kushina with him. As he had to be strong for her as well. As he couldn't let that bring him down so after a while, he was able to get his bearings back. As he returned to run in the village, like the Hokage that they needed, his wife was down. So he'd be there for her as much as possible. He also went to visit Kurnai a few times. Naruto was one year older than her. As she was 16 at the moment of his death, as Naruto was 18 because he had just turned 18, he was just always one year older than Kurnai. As she would be turning 17 soon, the girl was down. He had asked Kakashi and the others to help her in her down time, as she really missed him. So they did, they'd been there for her. Well, one person more than usual and that was Asuma. As things kind of escalated over the past 12 years. 12 years is a long time and her and Asuma started to date each other. Just recently though, they were figuring out what they were. As Kushina was happy for her, that she was happy once again. 
as all of them tried to move on. It's not like you will ever be forgotten, but they need to start their life and focus on the future. So that is what they did. Until there was a tragedy. Everyone wanted to know what happened. As Minato had told here's what happened that night. The council was there. He had fought a masked man who was claiming to be a Uchiha. Somehow the news had spread and the Uchiha's were more isolated than before as people thought that they were the reason why. Well, their hero was taken away while they lost so much. So there was many hate on the Uchiha clan. But Minato had rectified this as it was none of the Uchiha's that they currently reside with. The people had calmed down but they were still angry. As they wanted to know who was this mass Uchiha and where was he now. As many of them had lost loved ones that night as well. But the Uchiha's didn't like this one bit and they were not going to stand for it. So they started to revolt. As the police force became dangerous Minato had tried to keep the issue quiet and tried to solve everything but it was becoming too much out of hand. Until Itachi Uchiha slaughtered his clan. One by one he took them down. Minato was shocked by that as he couldn't believe that Itachi would do that. He had left the village. After slaughtering his clan, Minato was trying to find a peaceful way to resolve this because he didn't want things to turn too bad. But there was always Donzo who was trying to find a way to put the Uchiha's in a bad light. Minato had to put him in his place several times to make him understand that he was the Hokage and not him. But the man never backed down. Minato always believed that he had something to do with this, but there was no evidence or no proof. And not to mention no one could find Itachi, he was gone. And that was a bad day for the village. Mikoto was Kushina's best friend. So, she adopted Sasuke into her home. As Sasuke was just 6 years old at the time, as he was just a small child, she couldn't allow him to be alone so she adopted him into her home. And thus she had raised him, raised him alongside her daughter Mito, and the both of them got along quite well with each other. Minato didn't have a problem with this, because he also felt sorry for the boy as well, as he couldn't understand or believe that Itachi actually did that. So just like that, the years has passed, nothing quite tragic happened like what happened with the Uchiha's. We skipped to the next day, as the stadium was booming with activities. There was many things going on at the moment as people were on the edge of their seat watching the matches going on down below. A lot of people were here to see Mito Uzumaki and Mikaze, daughter of the Hokage of Kanuha and the famous Red Hot Habanero. Even though she stopped fighting, she still had her name. After all, Kushina was a fearsome person back in her time. And they were also here to see the Uchi as well. And also here to see the son of the Kazakage, who was said to be untouchable on each mission that he went on, that he never came back with a scratch, and the prodigy of the Hayuga clan. There was many that people were here to see. There was also a prodigy of the Kurama clan. The Kurama clan were a clan of Genjutsu users. As he was a boy, who was a prodigy of the clan that was incredibly powerful when it comes to his Genjutsus. As Kurnai had taken great interest in the boy, as the Kurama clan had the ability to make their genjutsu border on the edge of reality and illusion, it was amazing. The matches went off. Up in the booth was the Kazakage, along with Minato no Mikaze. But that was not the real Kazakage, it was just a disguise for the man underneath, who was finally ready to bring Kanoha to its knees. Harrison was still on the council, even though he was retired as a Hokage and Shinobi he was still on the council, as he still had advice, even though Minato has been doing this for quite some time now. He was like Donzo in fact, like the other elders, but Minato preferred him over all the others because the elders just got annoying sometimes. It was then that chaos erupted. As feathers start to fall from the heavens, putting everyone to sleep, Minato snapped his gaze towards the Kazakage, who chuckled ominously 
as suddenly the box was filled with smoke. As they broke through and landed on the roof. As a group of ninjas forth them surrounded them and started sealing inside of a rather large barrier that prevented Minato from leaving as it cut off any sort of chakra from being used on the outside. As he could not be inside and use chakra outside so he could not flash to any of his Harish and Kunais, he did not feel a pull. And you cannot get inside because if you touch the barrier, as the Anvil would accidentally touch it, it turned you into crepes, burn you up. Uruchimaru said Minato, as Uruchimar chuckled. I warn you that I will be back, Uruchimaru said. As he looked towards the man that he hated so much, he was supposed to be Fort Okage, not this man. It was a mistake for you showing your face here. You should know by now that you wouldn't be leaving. As Urchmar chuckles some more until the walls exploded, giant snakes rush into Kanoha. Did you really think I would come unprepared? I know that you have probably gotten stronger over the years, but so have I. I have plotted and waited for this exact moment. I know that I have it. Trust me. You and Kanoha will burn. That will never happen. You don't understand the will of fire, and you never will, but you cannot extinguish it, it will never fall. Orochimaru chuckled ominously once more, that you say, but let's see if I can't. Orochimaru opened his mouth as snakes rushed out of it, rushing towards the man. Minato decimate them within seconds, but that was just a distraction for him to use. They don't ain't say. As three coffins rose from the earth, Minato's eyes went wide. How dare you, he said, as he clenched his fists. As Urchimar chuckled, angry are we, he said. The first coffin lid drop opened to reveal Hoshirama Senju. The second, Toburama Senju. The third did not open, as markings came over it. Minato and Urchimar raised the eyebrow at that. What is this? Why won't you open, said Urchimaru, as he looked towards the coffin. Minato was skeptical to wonder who was in that, as he was confused, why wasn't it opening? As Minato pulled, it still coolness as he held them in both hands, as he held one like a reverse grip. It seems like your Edotense failed. Well, just one. The one that you were hoping to see, Minato. Your very dear brother. As Minato's eyes snapped towards men, you not only violated the first and the second Akagi by doing this jutsu but he went after Naruto. I'm going to kill you, said Minato. His tone making it very clear that he was going to. Well, it doesn't matter. I guess I can kill you with just... Orochimaru was cut off when a bright blue light started to emanate from the coffin. Both men had to step back as the roof started to crack. A violent outburst of chakra smash into the barrier. The sound force started to sweat, their knees buckled to keep it up. Another violent crash. Another violent crash. Stage 2, now said Seikon, as all of them went stage 2. Upon doing so, they transform. As they all undergo their stage 2 transformation with the curse mark. As they flare their bonus chakra now. To restrain the barrier as it started to crack. Uruchimaru was being smacked with the chakra. Also Minato as well as they were blown away. Luckily, they weren't burned when they hit the barrier from inside. Minato was confused as he could barely stand on his feet. This chakra. It was Naruto's alright, but what the hell was going on? It was then that the coffin exploded violently, sending wooden shards everywhere all over the place. As the Anvils wondered what was going on as a blue light escaped, with speeds that no one could see as it slammed through the ground at the cemetery where the body of Naruto Uzumaki was buried. Orochimaru did not get Naruto's blood from his coffin because all of the bodies inside this area was sealed off. Orochimaru had been in the village for a long time. There was blood samples of Naruto at the hospital not to mention he had spies within Kanoha. As Orochimaru did not go to the cemetery to check on Naruto's corpse itself. So no one knew about his body being crystallized down there since the night that he was buried. 
the blue light slammed into the ground. As the ground started to pulsate and pulsate and pulsate and pulsate until boom, dirt and debris and stones shot everywhere. As six feet down in the ground was a body. Whenever one undertook sage mode training and the natural energy did not correctly go into your system, you could be petrified in the stone. That was a state that neutral body was currently in at the moment until it started to crack and crack and crack and boom as blue eyes slowly opened his eyes instantly squinted to the bright light of the world as his eyes focused blinking several times as he felt a burning sensation as he looked down towards his stomach before he pulled himself up out of the hole as he stood in the grave, before jumping out, as he landed on his feet, he was still in his suit that was kept well preserved. As he checked it over, the suit seemed tight on him. His body was exposed to natural energy for the past 12 plus years. The earth had sustained his body in the petrified form. No one knew, not even the toads, if you were still alive once you became a toad. When you fail the Mount Miyaboku training, well, with a special seal, Naruto was able to keep his body alive even though he was practically dead. And with the nature energy gathering through his system running through it, it kept his body well, nutrients and strong. As he had grown, given the fact that his suit on him that he was buried in was so tight, it started to rip as he moved the slightest bit. His hair was still long as usual as he came down to the back of his neck. As he shook his head, blinking several times. As all he saw was darkness for a few seconds until his eyes adjusted to the light. He looked at his hands. As the shirt was too much, as he tore it off to expose his chest. Unblemished skin, not even a single cut. There was a maki. Healing ability was really amazing. His pants were a bit tight but walkable. As he held down to his head, as he started to walk, that was until he was surrounded. Hey look what we have here boys. A sound ninja said as he looked towards Naruto. Huh? Is this guy a part of Kanoha? He looks crazy. Maybe he's sick or mad. Well, a bonus kill. I'll see if I can hit him from a long distance with the kunai. The sound ninja said, acting like this was some sort of game even though they were in the midst of trying to conquer a village. Huh. If you miss, he's mine. As Naruto's hand was over his face so they could not see his face quite clearly. As he was still walking, hey stop where you are. Can't you see we're using you as target practice? Hearing that Naruto came to a stop, as his visions finally focus. As he was seeing three men in front of him but there was only one man with a kunai that he threw. As Naruto saw the kunai coming towards his skull as he raised his hand. As it stabbed into his palm. To the sound ninja's surprise it did not pierce his hand. It actually dropped on the ground. As Naruto looked at his hands he could still feel the nature energy coursing through him. But it was not fully activated because his eyes were the same but. Naruto did not have Toad Summoning, nor did he learn Sage Mode from the Toads at Mount Miyaboku. Naruto had another summon, a summon that belonged to the Uzumakis, a very powerful one, at that very moment a scroll. As Naruto's name started to be burned back into the scroll of the summoning creature that he possessed, he was alive after all, and his name returned back to the scroll. As Naruto clenched his fist in the opening several times, his body still feeling off, like it was not his, like he was in someone else's skin. He raised both of his hands as he slapped his face hard, causing the man to look at him confused. As his eyes focused, I know he could see clearly. As he heard explosions all around, his eyes focused towards the monument. A small smile crept up his face. I'm back, he said. As he took in a deep breath. I'm back, he shouted to the heavens. Hey, does he look 
familiar to you? One of them asks. Yeah, but I can't put my finger on it. Hey, who the hell are you? The sound ninja said. As Naruto blinked and focused on the man. Sorry, I'm being rude. The name is Naruto. Uzumaki. And who are you? The man stepped back in shock. Wait. That's not possible. It can't be. Yeah, he looks a bit older, but... You remember that... Photo that we saw? The man that had given up his life to save Konoha from the Night Deal Fox. Is... Is that him? No, he died a long time ago. You're... Mistaken, that can't be him. So who the hell is this then? And why does he look so much like him? It's probably just a... Person trying to imitate him. Let me break this genjutsu. Release! But nothing happened. Release, the man said. But nothing happened. Sorry. But I am real, said Naruto. What are you guys doing here? As the man started to stutter away from him. It can't be. Who are you, imposter? First, answer my question. What are you guys doing here and what's going on? Oh, that's simple. Our Lord Urchimar has given us the order to rig this village of you Kanoha scums by killing you one by one. And that is exactly what we're doing. Us, along with the sand, is bringing Kanoha to its knees. I'm confused. Isn't Kanoha and the sand allies? Not anymore. Our Lord made sure of that. Now, die! As the man moved forward, trying to take Nurta's head off, thinking that he was still an imposter until Nurta ducked under the swipe. As he stepped by the man and stepped behind him and started to walk away, the man stood there shocked. Hey, come back here! As he threw his kunai, as Nurta stepped to the side and avoided it, the man rushed towards him as he leaped, only for Nurta to lash out his hand and grab the man by his face. Electricity burst on his hand before the man screamed for a bloody murder as his face was electrocuted as Nurta dropped his corpse. The others used the opportunity to leap away, afraid, as they believed that he was indeed the man that was supposed to be dead a long time ago, and if he was him, they had to get the hell out of here. Has Kanoha really been keeping his death as a secret all these years? Was he truly alive? They had, they had to run. They knew that for certain, so they did run the hell out of there. As Naruto started to walk, as he saw chaos all over the place, as he was making his way, he heard a winds of pain as he turned his head. As Naruto made his way towards the sound, where he saw four grown men in front of a young girl. She had a gash on her forearm. The place was swarmed by so many ninjas that she was left alone to guard these civilians. As the civilians were behind her cowering a bit because they were afraid. As Naruto stepped forward, as one of the men chuckled, Now, now, girl. Stand down, we promise. It won't hurt, he said, as his friends laughed. The girl, with two buttons near here, unrolled a scroll. As she beckoned him to come. As the man chuckled, a brave one, huh? Well then, let me show you why you're wrong. The man moved only for his face to crash in the ground. Cracking it. This is just wrong, come on. It's four of you. I get that she's a Kunuichi. But she's still a child. And you four are trying to go up against her to hurt her. And these people who can't even fight. I really hate people like you, you know that, right? Said Naruto. And who the... The man couldn't get finished his sentence as Naruto released a wave of electricity that scorched them down to their bones as their bodies dropped like flies. The girl looked up as she was shocked looking at this person's face. He looked so familiar. The reason why he looked so familiar was because this girl was obsessed with weapons and there was a ninja in the past that had a legendary weapon that she read about but he had passed by saving the village risking his life to do so and this man looked just like him but he was supposed to be dead. Ah, a weapon user, huh? She was surprised. How do you know? Well, from one thing, your scroll said Naruto. And not to mention these. There were tiny cuts in her arms and shoulders. I can tell that he used weapon a lot. As he took her hand and right here. As he showed her the mark in her hand. The way she gripped corners and shurikens. I'm a weapon user myself. 
But I have this special sword, said Naruto. Wait, it can't be. One of the civilians behind the girl said. Are you... No. Who are you? The man said. The name is Naruto. Uzumaki. And who are you? No, that's impossible. Naruto Uzumaki died almost 12 years ago. But you look so much like him. Who are you? The man said. You're an imposter. Why are you... I assure you, I'm no imposter, said Naruto. I'm the real deal. As he gave the man a small smile. Don't worry. Things will be explained soon enough. Wait, you're really him? I, I read about you, said Tintin. Is that so, said Naruto as he patted her head. Well then, get them off to safety. There doesn't seem to be anyone else around here. I'll see if I can help. As Tintin looked at the man, she was so transfixed by not remembering who he was that she failed to see that he was not wearing a shirt. As she looked down, she got a small blush in her face. She turned as she took civilians away who were staring at the man. In absolute shock, as Naruto's head was finally back on its shoulders, as his mind was focused, being dead for almost 12 years could do that to you, but it seems like things work out for him. As his seal had worked, and someone wanted to use him to take over the hidden leaf, he poked his head, always expect the unexpected, as he laughed at his own joke. Before, he looked up ahead. As he flashed to a tall building, looking around, that is when he saw the massive onslaught of ninjas over his village, causing so much mayhem and destruction, and it angered him. These people, stepping into his village and doing this, he would not allow it. These people, harming his villagers, his family, his friends, this will not be allowed, he said. As Naruto looked forward when he felt a massive buildup of chakra over to the far east. So much power, it was a biju. But that did not matter as he bit his finger and went through hand sign. Please work, he said. Summoning Jutsu! Poof! A massive smoke cloud. Stop all the fighting. Jiraiya, who stood on top of Gamaken, stop. As he wondered who the hell just summoned. Was it another snake? As he was just about to tell Gamake to go and intercept this snake until everyone turned their head when they heard a screech followed by a bright spark of electricity that spread through the area and shot up in the sky. As a voice spoke, it was dark and sounded powerful like it just emit power and it was a cackling sound like electricity. How is this possible? I thought you were dead, the boy said. You should know by now that death is just an illusion, said Naruto. And I am full of illusions. The voice chuckled darkly. Well, it's been a long while since I've been summoned. For a good fight. You'll have to tell me about what happened later. But for now, I can see that your village is in trouble. Who do I kill, the boy said. As Naruto chuckled at that, you sure want to eat your wings blood, don't you? As I said, it's been a long time. As that amused Naruto. Well, said Naruto, there is some worm that is trying to destroy my village. Let's bring them down, shall we? As the thing chuckled darkly, let's. As it started to emerge from the smoke. What the hell? Said Minato. But guys, the end steps right here. If you want to see this part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share this with all of your friends. Ensure to meet the platform. I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.